because yeah. there's nuance here. Oh yeah, so there is. Kind of get into it. In fact, the big a big nuance is the calories, and this is where I need to be careful because the the degree of studies that have looked at these interventions that you're alluding to, and I'll touch on more now, in low calorie or hyper calorie, it's not been fully fleshed out. But I would think it's safe to say, if there is a caloric deficit, then it becomes less relevant. Um, which of the the balance of saturated fats to refined carbs. Now, then someone would say, well, then let's just always live in a caloric deficit. Yeah, good luck with that. I mean, if it were, if it were that easy, then people would just shrug their shoulders and say, okay, I'm just going to be on a low calorie diet for the rest of my life. So, so if, you're on a, if you're in a caloric deficit and you're eating, you know, some refined carbs, then it's I not think you have more wiggle gonna, room. You have more wiggle room. I for, think you for do. Yeah, system. yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm comfortable saying that. And then again, I just have to counter that by saying, that's not really feasible long term. You know, people get hungry. We're Hung healthy. Hunger always We're, wins. Yeah. yeah. yeah you got to you got to eat. Nutritious. Yeah, you got to eat. You got to fuel the body. So you can't be in that kind of chronic low calorie state. So my view on so saturated fats is one of the more polarizing topics and I am very comfortable talking about it because my entire postdoctoral fellowship was looking at I shouldn't say entire. My biggest paper ever published was looking at the degree to which different fatty acids are capable of causing insulin resistance through the conversion into ceramides. And I'm going to upset some people, but in cell cultures, if you treat cells with saturated fat palmitate, which is the main saturated fat in the body, you get insulin resistance very quickly. Now, if you block ceramides, you resolve that insulin resistance. If you treat those cells with monounsaturated fatty acid, no insulin resistance. If you treat those cells with polyunsaturated fatty acid, no insulin resistance. So as much as there is, and I believe it's justified, a very heavy focus on seed oils, I, I approve of that focus. I think they're pathogenic. But I grimace when people invoke them as a primary cause of insulin resistance because the data do not support it. Again, I think they're very harmful, um, but not when it comes to insulin resistance because you can, in fact, we would treat cells with palmitate, cause insulin resistance, co-treat them, co-incubate the cells with either oleic acid or linoleic acid, and we would reverse the insulin resistance. Now, I do not mean to give seed oils a pass. I think they're highly pathogenic, but not within... Well, there's other dietary sources of linoleic acid. There are, and there, you can't even Nuts, avoid them, I mean, really. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and meat. I mean, it, literally any animal source of, of fat, any animal food has some linoleic acid in it. It's, it's, you, it's ubiquitous. You would just, you know, want to control it, I guess. So with regards to saturated fat, that my own work, when I published that paper in uh, 2010, maybe, um, I... I left that project with this idea that saturated fats are thus a cause of insulin resistance. And I had to challenge my own assumptions when I saw the work of Dr. Jeff Volick, a friend and a legend in the realm of low carbohydrate studies, because he published some incredibly compelling papers. Over a few papers, he found that I, I had to sort of challenge the model where I thought, all right, I was treating cells with saturated fat. Is that the same as a human eating it? And of course it's not. And now to touch on his work, you can have uh, humans that if, if the carbohydrate levels are going down, they can eat two or three or four times more saturated fat than a high carb group. And then they're circulating levels of saturated fat. So the saturated fat in some in the plasma is significantly lower that's because most of the saturated fat that's flowing through our veins is coming from the liver. When the liver is told to make fat through de novo lipogenesis, the fat that it makes is palmitate. So most of the fat, most of the saturated fat we have flowing through our blood that's going to get to a cell is going to be coming from what the liver's making, not from what we're eating. And he showed this very, very well. But that's only in the background of low carbs. Exactly, yeah. So in fact, I won't even elaborate more on that if that point's clear. So the lower carbs are getting, the more you can eat saturated fat and appear to have no deficit. I'm very comfortable with that. No deficit in- No problem with insulin, insulin resistance. resistance. Yeah. Okay. And indeed- But it, yeah. calories aren't an issue in that. In that um, context, really. I, I don't recall whether they had it in a low-calorie context or not. I would suspect because insulin is low, once again, you probably have a little more of that metabolic wiggle room um, okay. uh, with the higher metabolic rate and then the ketone wasting. So it starts to get a little cloudy. As okay, to so the saturated the fat scenario is 
they that there is definitely a pathway to insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. um, however, it seems as though if you're more of a ketogenic type yep. of eater, low carb ketogenic yep. type of eater, that pathway doesn't seem to be relevant. Relevant. I, I'm very okay. comfortable with that. Yeah. In fact, that's a great way of stating it, that the lower the carbs are getting, the less the dietary saturated fat matters.